Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's day is July 24th, 2020. 3.32 p.m. And we're going to talk about some shit today. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my hosts, my co-hosts. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, my God. All the bras are going to be lined up when we get done here. Oh, my God. That's a lot of bras. Oh, damn it. <laughs> we're raising the price of the bras. The bras has just gone up. Dang it. Ah. All right. He said, hello, you stinky YouTube. <laughs> Stank. Ah, in my defense, I was unsupervised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Typical chat, typical chat. Speaking of chat, the U.S. military <laughs> may have violated First Amendment rights when it banned Twitch viewers for asking questions about American war crimes. Now, listen, full disclosure. I was in the U.S. military. I was in the army for eight years. I started when I was a junior in high school. Well, nine years, I guess, if you count that first part. I got into what's called the delayed entry program. I signed up. They harassed the shit out of me, tried to get me to, to join either the Marines or the Air Force or the fucking the army or whatever. Uh, they came to my job, okay? And they came to my talk to my boss, asked me if I could take a break so they could harass me some more. It was awesome. Uh, then I went and actually joined the military in 1999, because I'm old, and and I had a blast for four years. I got out of active duty and I went to National Guard. I hated the National Guard. I felt like it was a whole bunch of people that worked at Walmart who thought that they were big shit when they came and put a uniform on and tried to boss me around. And I wasn't having any of that shit. So <clears throat> the National Guard I wasn't a big fan of, especially coming right out of uh, active duty. Uh, but I did appreciate the uh, active military. Now, that being said, I may be a little bit biased here, but I'm trying my fucking damn is not to be okay try my damnedest not to be because i recognize that the u.s military over the course of time of history has absolutely done some shit that maybe they don't want to talk about anymore so what happened what do you mean they may have violated first amendment rights well here is what we'll call the straw that broke the camel's back this is a video provided by uh slasher on his channel here on his uh, twitter feed basically his channel at this point oh, here we go so this flex. is the u.s army esports official channel on twitch talk all that crap. and you see there's a bottom right corner here you see it says what's your favorite u.s war crime and it says your message what is supposed to do to conflicts with the channel's moderation settings so there's so there's a filter here and so this person's trying to get around it he knows what words are being filtered so he's trying to get around it Using what's called leech speak. <laughs> and here we go. Get out of my bed. I'm just ran into the room. Wait, back door or front door? Yeah, back door. Oh, the guy I just killed. Got him. Oh, yes. Thank you for giving me an even worse gun. Thank you. Even chat's saying at this point, he's going to ban you. Here we go. Oh, cool. Nice. Really chill guy. Have a nice time getting banned, my dude. Which, by the way, so. I think every. <clears throat> So the person who's playing right now uh, is a, as it is with all of U.S. military related sports, um, pretty much all of them, uh, is somebody who is actually active duty. So this person that you're watching, he's wearing his hat indoors, which is a big fucking no-no. Uh, really hurts my feelings seeing that. But I understand these prob they're probably doing it for promotional purposes, as is everything sports related that the military has its hands in okay uh so he says what did the chatter expect exactly exactly uh <clears throat> so when i look at when i look at this on the surface what i see is a streamer with some guy in here being a dick trying to like bring up shit that's obviously this guy who's probably like 20 years old has nothing to do with uh and he's trying to stir, just try to stir the pot a little bit but it was just enough to get a whole lot of headlines, a whole lot of headlines. So let me see. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with, let me actually get out of this page here. Uh, Vice.com put an article saying that the U.S. Army esports team may have violated the First Amendment on Twitch. So why? Why is that? Well, according to the ACLU, it said, they said, quote, 
it imposes an unconstitutional restriction on the participation in a designated public forum. So Twitch is when the government is involved, uh, can be, I uh, can't, you could translate that into a public forum because the military has a presence there and they're using it as a platform to recruit. And so you could call that technically a private or a public forum. They've converted a private company into a public forum. So that quote that I just read, and I'll read it again. It imposes an unconstitutional restriction on their participation in a designated public forum was actually not related to this particular instance, although they are claiming the same thing. This is related to uh, a couple years ago when uh, Donald Trump, the president of the United States of America, uh, said or uh, started blocking people on Twitter. And that's where that quote came from, because they sued him for blocking people on Twitter. And so it's the same, it's the same mentality of saying, if we can't, if you, if you, you can't block people on social media, just because they don't share the same views you do, if you represent the government, which I feel, I feel from that perspective, it's like, okay, that makes sense because I know how, how the, uh, how the military, how aggressive they can be with their recruiting, how they're, they're, they're willing to push the boundaries. They're willing to spend tons of money. They're willing to go over the top, uh, to try to get people to. Uh, to join the service, uh, <clears throat> and so let's 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 take a look at because some people are saying they shouldn't go on Twitch, they shouldn't be on Twitch, there should be no military on Twitch. It's like, well, let's let's just let's let's just go back a little bit uh, to first see how many different uh, sports is the, is the military site going to join? They're going to dock up, going to load. There it is. Uh, so U.S. Armed Forces have. Uh, their hands in, they have a presence in 26 sports and you could see them right here. Now, this is not the whole list. Some of them are exclusive to the military. They'll only like kind of like, compete within the military or whatever, but you could see it's a lot. They have people in basically everything. Uh, this is a, uh, presence that they started in 1999 or 2000, right around there. So basically right after I joined and they decided that uh, they were going to do a test. They were going to do a test and they are going to spend five years trying to recruit through some of these new means, which is going to be like uh, through like sponsoring the sports and all that good stuff. Sponsorships, exactly. Uh, and it says that the, that's why the army now spends upward of $24 million a year on sports marketing initiatives. And this was 2003. This article is posted 2003. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that's right. There was also the America's Army video game that came out around that same time, actually. Around, uh, was it around 2000? No, no, it was later than that, actually. I think it was a little bit later than that. Um, but still, though. Um, and so they did a test, and this first five-year test they did was exclusively, exclusive to motorsports. And then, you know, fast forward years later, they're, they're getting in trouble for stuff. They're, they're getting flack because they're back in the U S Marines specifically are backing uh, UFC and UFC was known for their rampant sexism. So they got, they got some uh, shit for that. And so they ended up backing out of that. So they're no stranger. The U S military is no stranger to like getting involved in civilian facing or civilian run entities, sports entities, uh, and you know, getting a little bit of guff for it. So this isn't the first time at the rodeo, okay? Uh, 2002 for the original version 3.0, according uh, was uh, 2009 according to Google. There you go. Um, and so, but but despite all this stuff, they were still allowed to continue. NASCAR military sponsorship was allowed to continue, allow following a house of votes. So they're allowed to continue to uh, sponsor basically whatever they really will really wanted at that time. They sponsor a shitload of like i said like a ton of sports they have a ton of sports they participate in they sponsor even more than that uh they they sponsor if you watch nascar they have a car if you watch indy they have a car uh if you watch uh anything in nhra nhra is the national hot rod association so if you watch like drags or anything like that like you're gonna get a funny car exactly top field dragsters exactly was that just saying uh yeah they have a presence everywhere this is part of you know just how they spend money trying to recruit people because if we go back to this article here from 2003 it even says here it says uh, see, da, 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 it says today with the wide range of entertainment options available to young people the internet 300 cable channels satellite tv the army cannot afford the amount of advertising it would take for us to meet our recruiting mission if we depended solely on traditional advertising because prior to this 
They said, it said back in the days, there were three places the army would look for people, ABC, CBS, and NBC. There was just not a lot of ways for them to get a hold of people. Uh, RuPaul's track with what? <laughs> Did they sponsor that? <laughs> Your tax dollars at work. The army does not have their own money. This money's out of pocket. So I hope you like what they support. That is that is that is true. That is true. Uh, the military does have a budget. That budget is paid for by U.S. tax dollars. Uh, and so, and if everything you see here, everything they sponsor is all stuff that is paid for by the, by us. By us. Uh, and so... Not only were they getting into racing and fights and other sports, the 26 other sports or whatever that I listed here, uh, they also started dabbling in esports a little bit, specifically with. Cloud9 is honored to announce our newest partnership with the U.S. Air Force, allowing us to aim higher than ever before. Our fans will have unprecedented access as our team pushes their own limits and get an inside look at the Air Force. This is 2018, by the way. So I just want to remind you guys that this is not new. <laughs> this is not new. This is stuff that has been... The military is on top of this shit. Again, since since 2000, since 1999, when they realized that there's no way they were going to... They were going to put ads on 300 channels. They had to come up with different ways that they could do stuff. And so <clears throat> esports was a way to do it. I mean, and it, this was not just a passive. It wasn't just a passive presence this is a very very this right here is sergeant chris greenfield of the united states air force let's give some love to our it's a very in your face like this is a very presence heavy promote uh, uh, sponsorship skadoodle the u.s air force most valuable player there you go u.s air force most valuable there you go shake hands son there you go so like i said the military is not new to this they have been involved in everything forever twitch is the just the latest of hurdles just the latest of hurdles are you gonna cover the face i'm getting there i'm getting there word skirt take a sip ah national tequila day <clears throat> they also have had a presence on no shocker whatsoever on youtube since 2006 since 2006 uh and it, so it should be noted since 2006 they have absolutely banned uh users and removed comments that didn't suit the pro military recruitment narrative uh and they've actually gone through and they've uh, disabled comments and i don't know when they've disabled comments but you can see on every single video they have the comments are disabled um let me turn this out a little bit uh, so oh my god a 50 cal fuck that thing fuck that thing jesus christ uh so <laughs> uh so they they keep the ratings though the ratings are still there and you can see the ratings aren't terrible so they're not it's not like they're getting bombarded with with comments and all that stuff you should know that the U.S. Air Force, the Marines, I didn't check, I didn't bother checking the Navy because I figured they're probably fine too, all have their comments enabled, comments and ratings. So the U.S. Army is the only one that has their comments disabled. So that might have been a recent thing. I'm not sure, given the way that, um, you know, how things have kind of picked up lately. Then maybe they went through and did a, a, a sweep of just basically everything. But I have never heard of somebody complaining about being censored on a military, a U.S. military, uh, YouTube channel. So I really strive and maybe maybe it exists. I'm sure I'm sure somebody out there got mad. I'm sure somebody out there was like, err. But it probably didn't get the traction that it's getting now because Twitch is a very, very different beast. And so because of we can stop this video. Uh because of the uh uh well because of the of what's of of the immediacy of this kind of interaction which is not, I mean, if it was any other streamer and somebody was trolling them, you'd be like, fine. But the problem is the is that the person represents the U.S. military. And so there's a whole new set of rules associated with that. And so now this is something that we're going to see, you know, basically get uh, uh, get debated whether or not they're allowed to do this or they're not allowed to do that uh, on a public forum such as, you know, Twitch. I guess YouTube is kind of like separated from this because it's not immediate, right? Because the comments are deleted later rather than being deleted instantaneously. Uh, the users are banned later instead of being banned instantaneously. Uh, so, so for me, it's kind of like, why are we making a big deal out of this now? Probably because it's happening live. Because he said, 
get shit on or whatever. I don't know, he didn't say get shit on. Sorry. Uh, he said, <laughs> that's what I would have said. Get shit on. Uh, he said, he, he just said, all right, thanks. Cool guy or whatever. They like real nice guy. And he banned the guy. Uh, should the channels be age gated uh, or is army recruitment of kids legal? Uh, I don't know what the law says in terms of recruitment of kids. Uh, in terms of, I'm not sorry, recruitment of kids. It's sort of uh, getting, ex having propaganda exposed to children because, for the for for all time, <laughs> whenever they've had an ad on TV, like going back like 30, 40 years, the ad on TV. Remember that B? All that you can't be. Get an ugly wife and a messed up life in the army. Remember that? So that was all focused on whoever was watching the TV at the time. There was no filter for kids, right? There was no filter for kids. <laughs> <laughs> so so th this is you so people are like oh they're 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 aiming for kids they're trying to like brainwash kids it's like dude they're just trying to get recruits they're trying to meet the numbers right what whatever you feel about the u.s military beyond that it's totally up to you you can make up whatever you want yes they've definitely made some mistakes i could tell you that i was in it i was involved for eight years and i had a blast the last four years were a bit rough but i had a blast when i was in now i would not send declan into it right because i don't feel like i feel like my dad we're like when my dad, my dad was in the Marines, and when I, uh, when I was approached by both the Marines and the uh, the U.S. Army uh, to join, I scored I scored particularly good on my ASVAB, uh, which is the uh, aptitude of uh, the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery Test. Uh, it basically tells you where you're going to be placed. It's kind of a placement test, right? So I scored particularly well on that, and they started to hound me. And so I had both the military, both the Marines and the U.S. Army. Now my dad, excuse me, being a being a uh, a Marine vet, uh, we went to the Marines office, and my dad said, "You're not joining this because the office was dirty." <laughs> Because the office was disorganized. And that was enough for my dad to say, no, this is not the same Marines that I was in. So you're not joining this. And that was it. And so now, <laughs> here I am, the same age as my dad when I joined the military. Uh, and I'm thinking about Declan. It's like, would I even let Declan join the army? Nope. <laughs> no way. No, 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 no. Maybe their office is dirty. I don't know. But I have other reasons now. So I now, I, I, I kind of get my dad in that sense now. But anyways, so. <laughs> whoa, dad. <laughs> uh, so now this is obviously making headlines. And so people are getting involved. Uh, not surprisingly, the first person to actually start to put forth any kind of actual paperwork uh, that is uh, associated with this, uh, you with this, uh, uh, controversy uh, is AOC. Now, AOC, now listen, I know that she's very divisive. Okay. I know that she is. I know that she is. But what I will say is that I am glad that there is somebody who is working in the gov in government who is not bronze level league. Okay. <laughs> she's not a bronze. Oh, she's silver. Okay. She's silver. A silver three. Uh, so I'm happy that there's somebody there that at least knows that Mark Zuckerberg does not own AOL, okay? Does not have anything to say about Yahoo, all right? So, yes, she's very divisive. But we're not talking about AOC. We're talking about what she put forth, which was a measure to basically say that, and I'll pull it up right now. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Tim Apple. Fuck. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> Most of them are more like Wood League. Thank you so much, was well, yeah, for reals. Let me see. Uh, uh, I don't actually know her whole name. Let me see. Da, 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 da. It's it's version five. My partisan. Let me. I'll find it in a sec. Oh wow, I'm way at the bottom here. Uh, so what it says prohibits the fun the use of funds for military recruitment via video game. Video game. Uh, here it is. Prohibits the use of funds for military recruitment via video game and esports platforms. So this is the measure she's putting into this next uh, uh, bill to <clears throat> to basically prevent money being spent on this. And I f I find that a little strange, only because this is not again this is not the military's first rodeo. They've they've been involved in so many sports that what's stopping them from continue continuing to put money into those fields. And that's where if you were listening before the show my 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 screen reader thing started reading esports are sports. That's what I wrote. Esports are sports. So where is the line on where the military is allowed to get involved with esports uh and not 
you know, like like where, where's where is the line there? Because they they are involved in everything. They're a sponsor for they were a sponsor for Cloud Nine. They're they're in basically every motorsport. Uh, they have a they have their own fucking teams for a lot of sports. So it's like where where do you draw the line for that? Esports is a global thing. Uh, for in my opinion, as much as I like AOC, I do I like AOC. Uh, I don't agree with this revision. <laughs> because I don't think it fits. If if by saying this, you to me, you're saying that esports is not a sport because of how we qualified it in the past. Honestly, the military should not be able to leverage U.S. tax money to recruit people so young that they don't understand the consequences of responsibility of being in a position to kill people. That has been an argument for the for all time. Like that is that is the all time argument. There, military is always going to go after. 16 17 year olds the same way they came after me um and because yeah we're you were young we're stupid i joined the military simply because i didn't have anything to do after i was done with high school i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do after high school my mom's got a bunch of money set aside for college uh i'll let my brothers have that money and then i'll just go you know i'll just go uh you know fuck off in the military and get like you know some 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 college money doing that i don't have some fun whatever um <clears throat> Let me see. Let me read some of these comments here. Magic connection to the football. The millions of kids watch all weekend. That's right. So you know you can uh, say anything as long as left agrees with it. Otherwise, you are no. Uh, the entire army versus navy game every year in college football. That's right. They actually they actually have their own uh, uh, high school. Uh, like I, th- I think it's a national bowl for like the best high school like football team or something like that. Uh, I don't have the details on that. Um, as vets, Mike and I both can say that most people join because they are poor or do uh, or do not, do not know what else to do. Exactly. Yeah, that's why I joined. I didn't know what else I was going to do. I was like, you know, what? all I do right now is uh, I, I work at a pharmacy. And then afterwards, I go and I spend all of that pharmacy money at uh, the local pool hall. That was my that was what I did all, every single day. So that was my life. And so I didn't really know what I had planned afterwards. So I decided to go and just, you know, give it a shot. They actually told me not to join. True saying back in high school, the Marines, the U.S. Navy all told me not to, should not join them. Oh, interesting. Uh, we either let them recruit or we get conscripted. Thank you. Frey Corps. Yeah, that's the truth. Right now, we have an all voluntary military service. So we're not going to be abolishing the military anytime soon. Okay. Unless you want some foreign entities to just move on in and just kind of, you know, take over. Maybe not in the sense of take over the White House or anything, but, you know, just like lost the U.S. dollar and all that good stuff. So we have to, because it's all voluntary, we have to find a way to get those people involved, like get those people to want to join. And so that's the so this type of promotion, the military trying to get creative by by getting into again in 1999 getting into uh, motorsports, NHRA, NASCAR, IndyCar, trying to get involved in motorsports in order to get a presence out there, uh, generate, getting their own teams. The, 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 having their own teams, having their own sports program, this dates back to like 1948. Like it's not new. It's not new, new. <laughs> like it's stuff that's been going on for a minute. Um, so many people sign up for a selective service at the age of 18? Yes. Yeah, they still do. Um, as long as everyone has an equal draw, that means no draft deferments for rich kids. So that's, that's a, that's a, I would say Zebrios, that's a, that's like a fringe opinion there. Uh, I don't know if everybody is okay with the way that, uh, South Korea does it, which is everybody, is that what you're referring to? Uh, where everybody has to serve at least two years in the military before they reach the age of, I think 27, you guys can probably correct me on that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, <clears throat> it, the way it works is they have a standardized, you have to serve the mil- in the military. So, uh, everybody, so, okay, so you think that, Zeb- okay, so Zebrios, you think that, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, because I've already served, so I'm biased, right? So, it's like, yeah, I would have served two years, I got out, no problem, but again, hella biased, I've already done it, uh, but, oh, it's 18 months now, oh, good, get those guys back, get those guys back in StarCraft, <laughs> my boy, classic, uh, I'm so, so sad, <laughs> Korea, Switzerland, Israel, yeah, South Korea is still actively at war, yeah, uh, yeah, you're, I mean, you're right. You're totally right. Totally right. I don't want to play that down. You're absolutely right. Um, let's see. Part of the U.S. thing is that people can have an opinion against the military, but if all had to serve that opinion, would be silenced. Ooh. So you see, we're getting into, a, we're getting into an area that's like really, really, really super gray. Super, we, like, there's a lot of opinions all over the place on how we should handle this. I, I'm certain Zebrios, uh, now I'm not trying to single you out because that opinion does exist out there. There are people that think that having, uh, uh, having mandatory military service before a certain age should be a thing. Um, 
but if you look at if you ask you know a, a, a bunch of people people watching this i'm sure there's a lot of folks who probably don't agree with that that'll probably be like fuck that i don't want to join the military for whatever um so because that doesn't exist, the military has to find creative ways to do it. So that's the reason why I wanted to give a little history lesson on how they started. First, they were doing M- NBC, ABC, uh, CBS. That was their only way to get a hold of people. And then they started to branch off into other things because those weren't the only three channels anymore. <laughs> now your dial has 240 slots instead of just the usual 13. Uh, so yeah, it was, it, it's, it's, it's something that is a, we could call it a necessary evil. I'd be okay with calling it that. I think a necessary evil. Uh, so now where do we draw the line? Again, we get back to where do we draw the line? UHF pan for life. I was always so confused by that. I was like, why is there so many channels on this and none of them work? Anyways, only UHF kids would know this. Uh, <laughs> by the way, that movie was amazing. Okay. So tons of countries don't have mandatory military service and they're doing fine. So I don't get why exactly it should be mandatory. I would say that probably those those countries that don't have a military service probably don't have uh, a strong military presence. I would I would, I don't know who I don't know who you're referring to by the way. Um but I I would say that there's probably uh a correlation there where it's like we have to as the I mean the US dollar is the uh the global do- the global global currency, right? Sure it's an oil currency, which is why when the oil like tanks everyone panics. Uh sure there's that, but there are certain things in place. It's just because it's a global currency doesn't mean that it's there because everybody agrees to it. It's there because we enforce it. When you when you look at all of these, when you look at some of these little conflicts that happen in like the South China Sea and all this, right? You would think it's like, oh, it's kind of weird. These guys are flexing on each other. All this shit has to do with money. All this shit has to do with whose money it comes down to being in control of everything. Uh, buy Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> Galvis, yes. Um, and so it's it's it is a kind uh, of started saving up bottle caps yeah yeah exactly so having a a strong military presence is just a it's a byproduct of how it's a necessary evil of to having a having the global dollar basically the global currency um so many military commercials on USA Network than all other networks combined back in the early days of cable. USA Network. But totally makes sense. Uh, let me scroll back up here real quick and get Zebrio's comment here because I, I didn't want to. I really don't want to single any of you guys out because you guys are totally welcome to have your opinions and everything. I know that your opinion is representative of at least some subset of the community, especially in the States. Uh, so I'm not saying it's a great system, but it's fair at least. It, it is, as it is now, it's overwhelmingly poor families who are putting their children at risk in the military. That's true. Uh, it makes certain that people in positions of power don't have to risk losing their jobs so that they're more likely to take war decisions lightly. Zebrios, that is, and it's very true. It's very true. And when you look at the, um, I mean, that that extends into everything. That extends into everything. You know, it's like poor people always get the shit end of the stick. You know, when you look at, when you, when you look at the like coronavirus, for example, uh, you look at coronavirus, it has a heavier impact on, uh, on, on persons of color and minorities and poor folks because they're the ones who are working the minimum wage jobs, not getting paid anything and so the system keeps them down there and so they're the ones that have to keep going and 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 working at uh doing deliveries or doing uh as as a waiter waitresses or service service positions and all that stuff because those that's where they're at uh and so yeah it is it is definitely a, this current system certainly favors those who are uh more well off and you know what like maybe even myself like I took the test and I, when you went in all this stuff and it is like, maybe if my parents were rich, I probably wouldn't go. I mean, I mean, look at all that. I mean, let's just, we already mentioned Donald Trump once. Let's mention him again, right? Donald Trump did not serve in the military, right? And there was, there was a couple of, there was somebody else. There's another president actually that I think uh, uh, was a draft dodger uh, at some point uh, for some other reason, but it usually boils down to, it usually boils down to, uh, they're just too rich. <laughs> They're just too rich to, uh, to to be recruited. And that's fucked up. Absolutely fucked up. Elvis served. <laughs> I mean, goddamn. <laughs> At the same time, the military is a very good place for the poor to become middle class. Yeah, that's true. That's also very true. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of a shitty way to do it, but it's very true. Um, you say, I'd be honest, I draft dodge like a mofo. I, I understand why people would be hesitant to join the military. Again, like I had, I had a great experience and I, I had a great experience despite being in the service during 9-11. All right. So even though everything that I, everything was tightened down 
to like some insane level of protection of like security, I still enjoyed and had a good time. Now, I was never deployed uh, overseas. I was deployed on the island for shit, uh, but I was never deployed overseas. Well, wait, uh, no, uh, no, 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 training ops and stuff like that don't count. Um, you were pre 9 11. Yes, yeah, so I was during 9 11 when that shit happened or when. Uh, uh, when I was in, I still, I still feel like it was, uh, it was a good experience. Now I can't speak to everybody. Obviously we lost a lot of people in various wars for various reasons, whatever, whether you'd agree with them or not. But, um, but again, like th- it's, it's a person that's me personally. Um, you're at four hood on nine 11. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the army would be fine. Just don't join the Marines. The first ones in it's national guard. <laughs> national guard goes in before Marines. Uh, but no, you're, I mean, you're right in general typically that's the case so so aoc introduces the uh prohibit the use of military funds recruitment via video gaming and esports platforms now because it's aoc is probably not going to go anywhere because everybody hates her somebody called her a fucking bitch to her face and i thought that what she said back uh if you guys watched it please do it's like a 10 minute speech that she gave that was brilliant uh the way that she yeah just absolutely brilliant please take time to watch this just type in aoc yo ho and you'll and you'll get it uh whether or not you like aoc i feel like you'll still understand what she's trying to say here so moving moving forward in the story <laughs> uh, you want to be uh, stationed overseas because otherwise it's cold as all hell in the vast majority of posts oh yeah oh yeah um so let's see so it's it uh, earlier it was mentioned that their giveaways were um shady and i want to acknowledge that yes u.s army recruiters will absolutely say and do anything to your face to get you to join or get you to do whatever they want to do right u.s army recruiters are are uh are definitely the worst experience in in the military in my military service the recruiter was the worst uh at the time i thought that this guy was my friend but that was his job that was his job when i joined the service i was i was uh i was dating somebody uh and you know high my high school sweetheart okay uh i joined and i got deployed to uh or i got stationed uh to hawaii and then uh but before I went, before I, yeah, sorry, before I was actually still in uh, Fort Gordon, Georgia, uh, doing my tech school. It was a very long tech school. And so I was there forever. She said that she was going to join. And I tried to write her back and say, no, don't. <laughs> because I knew it was a trap. She says, oh, I'm talking, I'm talking to Sergeant Morgan. And he tells me that we're going to be stationed together, all this stuff. And I said, that's a lie. <laughs> the second I got in, I knew it was a lie. I knew everything was a lie. And I was so mad. And so I got in. She said, she sent me a letter because we, we, we weren't texting each other and all that shit. She sent me a letter. And then, and then by the time I got it, it was already too late. 10 day turnaround going from Las Vegas to Georgia 10 day turnaround man this yeah forget it so she ended up joining uh she uh she ended up she ended up getting she she was told that she would get stationed wherever I went which was a lie uh and she uh she went to Fort Jackson which was not too, not too far from Georgia and uh we got to see each other one time before she got deployed to Korea all right and that was the end of that that was the end so yes recruiters will do anything anything to uh to 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 make their quota absolutely anything to make their quota uh and so yes <laughs> they are i'm not surprised to see that they had and i'll read this is a the this outreach included automated links dropped into the army stream chat that told viewers they could win an xbox elite series 2 controller in a giveaway but when anyone clicked the link says the nation uh they were directed to a recruiting form with no additional mention of a contest odds total number of winners or when a drawing would occur so not surprised at all recruiters are the worst part about the military and they're the ones that represent they're the face they're the face of 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 the service uh but you can't you can't get away with that shit in the internet man the internet will figure all that shit out (laughs) 
and they did. <laughs> and that's why there's that's why we have these articles popping all over the place. That's why we have uh, AOC pushing for uh, for an amendment that says that uh, they can't spend money on uh, on Twitch and esports and all that. Um, <clears throat> I remember the one question I asked set up the red flags that made me back away. The guy was talking uh, me up for a tech role. So how many of these tech positions are open at a given point? And he suddenly gets real squirmy. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, Twitch uh, put their foot down on that one. Yeah, so so uh, Xbox controller is the name of your your bunk. <laughs> what an Xbox! I should just buy one with your sign on bonus. That's right. Yeah, uh, I feel like I should clarify my earlier do not join comment. They tried to recruit me at first, but I asked too many questions. Apparently, real thought out questions, and that is what they told me not to join. Yeah, there's definitely so they they go out of their way to like try to like recruit you. Like I said, they'll go to your. They, they went. They came to my job um, at the time. Uh, this is before I started working at the pharmacy. I was working at, uh, I was a bag boy at like Lucky's, like a Safeway, right? Uh, grocery store. Um, and I remember they came over and they talked to my, um, uh, my, uh, my manager and, and, uh, and I came inside and I was just like, what is he doing here? And she was like, oh, he, he, he said, he asked me if you, you could take a break so you guys could talk about stuff. And so I said, okay. And I was like, all right, cool. I thought it was weird, but you know, I was like six, 16 and a half, 17 years old. I was young. Uh, and Damn, that's how they got me. Um, the Air Force recruiter told me they had a buddy program where friends that sign up together end up in the same base. Hounded me for years after I got 86 on ASVAB. Never joined, though. There you go. They don't like free thinkers. The Army wants people smart enough to problem solve combat scenarios, but not smart enough to ask why they're in these scenarios. I, I would say, in general, they want people that are smart, but at the same, but recruiters, again, going back to recruiters, recruiters are the ones who will. Um, who will not waste time with people that ask too many questions for sure. Yeah. They, 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 they need to make a quota. And if you're dra if you're dragging your feet, they might just be like, ah, I'll just call you every once in a while to see that when, you know, see what you're up to, but not necessarily go to your, you know, go to your school, go to your job and all that shit. Uh, it's all about the quota, all about the quota. So U S army retreats from Twitch. I like how they use retreats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as recruitment drive backfires, withdrawal follows criticism over alleged use of game streaming site uh, to attract recruits. Uh, so, yeah, so they right now, as it stands, they are uh, pausing so they can they want to. I believe the quote was uh, review uh, internal procedures and all of that, so that way they can uh, figure out where they what 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 went wrong, uh, and then come back and then continue to. Uh, continue to uh, recruit. This is not the end. Like, like I said, this this is a seventy-two year old process here that they've been they've been doing. They're not going to just stop because a couple of people on the internet got mad. They're going to figure out a way to, to to continue to have a presence in esports. Like I said, uh, or in streaming, they'll probably end up instead of having their own channel. Maybe they're just going to start sponsoring people. And so what you'll have is instead of having a Logitech sponsor, you'll have they Zebros on the same page. They'll have somebody who is sponsored by the U.S. Army, but who's not technically in the Army, you know? So, yeah. Are you sponsored? Shit, I'll take an Army sponsorship. I'll just say the same shit I'm saying right now, though. <laughs> I wouldn't send my kid. It'd be that one month long sponsorship. <laughs> uh, see, um, Let's try this Twitch thing. Twitch users get the fuck out. Yeah. So this is this is definitely new for them. But like I said, they they have gotten creative in the past, and they will do it again. This is not the this this is not the last you've heard from me, gadget. Whatever. No, that's different voice, huh? Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, U.S. military. Interesting. I'm. I. I, I was. I, it's, it's just really interesting. Uh, we will see them back, and we will uh, probably report on that. You know, next time, Gadget, next time. Yeah. <laughs> Army's looking for drone pilots. Gamers make good drone pilots. I had a friend who was a drone pilot in the service, actually. He said it was a blast. Um, uh, him and I actually used to have a uh, shoutcast, which was a podcast before podcasts were a thing. Um, and we had a regular radio show. It was very vulgar. I'm sure if any of those any of those audio files ever leaked anywhere, we'd prob I'd probably never be able to run for any kind of office anywhere. But, uh, but you know, a couple of dudes in the military. You know, inviting some of the girls in to 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 taste test uh, condoms on a microphone. You know, you know, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. That kind of thing. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I'll tell I'll tell I'll tell that story another time. Uh, so. <laughs> 
so you know saturday night <laughs> we've all been there uh so let me close all these tabs god damn uh all right <laughs> so a lot of you guys uh you know throw some money at whether it's a streamer like myself uh or you know some other streamer you're throwing money at at Twitch in some form. And you're probably wondering how did that get past? You're probably wondering how uh how your money's being spent. It's like taxes. You know, you kind of want to know how your money's being spent, don't you? Uh <laughs> why did I just put it in their mouth like gum? Because you couldn't hear it. <laughs> no more questions. No more questions, all right? No more. All right. So anyways, <laughs> Uh, all right, so you probably want to know where your money's going. And I'm here to tell you today where your money's going. It's going to fund a seven figure deal with. Is it seven or six? Seven figure deal with rapper Logic. Who I'm not sure if any of you guys really know who Logic is. Do you? Well, first answer is who? All right, cool. Who? 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 Okay, I know that some of you guys do for sure. So Logic is a he is a rapper. He was in the industry for ten years. He so this this would mark this would who who this marks Twitch's first exclusive deal with a musician. This is their first deal with a musician uh now he's retiring from music <laughs> his last and final album is last and final his last album drops today um and he started streaming uh he said logic is friends with critical role folks yeah yeah no so 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 first of all while i do feel like this is a uh this is a lot of money to throw to somebody, to a single person. For music, I feel like this is also Twitch trying to further like their presence in mainstream music. Because I mean, I'm sure you guys have been watching Twitch lately. Like we have Mike Shinoda like getting super integrated into the community, which is great. Uh, we have Questlove, like, I mean, so, 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 so many, so many uh, people are, uh, musicians are getting involved in Twitch because they're not touring anymore. They're not touring, they're not going anywhere. And so, so yes, yeah, so the seven figures is not a big number for exclusive streamers. I mean, it's, if it, I'll take this up to $9 million, seven million, six, seven million, six million, three million. Um, we forgot to lock up a Twitch record. Look up a uh, yeah, Twitch record. I remember last month seeing Dead Mouse. Dead Mouse. Fucking Gary Gannon. Uh, Dead Mouse 5. Dead Mouse uh, streaming on Mixer. Don't know where he is now. He's probably coming back. Am um, I going to collaborate with Logic? Oh, yeah. No problem. It's not. Yeah, it's not Ninja Money. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah. So, it's their first It's their first foray into uh, locking down a, a single musician to the channel. His plan is to be a bit of a variety streamer. Focus on doing some, like, you know, do some beat creation, uh, interacting with the fans, and doing all that stuff. Um, and he said, "Damn it, I forgot about Grimpon Trey again." What up, crime? Um, <laughs> and it says, <clears throat> and so, Lo so Logic said the site was the safest way possible to interact with fans. And then the next line on here uh, in this article says. Twitch was recently accused of not doing enough about abuse claims, as well as not banning streamers who use racist or homophobic language. <laughs> this, is a, this is a safe place for me to interact with my fans. Let me see how she's fighting. This is so much more impact here, isn't there? Right there. Twitch was recently accused of not doing enough about abuse claims. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> also on that note yeah and, and also, also it's funny it's like it says twitch lost someone who brought a lot of viewers to the site when they banned dr disrespect last month so maybe people are saying maybe this is just a reflex they're just like oh snap we need someone to bring some viewers now his first stream uh almost hit a hundred thousand 
Not quite. It's like 98 something. Let's take a look. Let's take a look here. Uh, we got the numbers. We got the numbers. Dr. Who? Exactly. Wait a minute. Uh, so here we go. So he peaked at, uh, it says 84,000 here, but I saw, here we go, right? Peak viewers is 97,930. So he, he peaked at that and, um, the first day back or the first day, the first big promotion day back or on a platform or whatever, it's always going to be your biggest day. So seven figures for less than a hundred thousand viewers on launch to me, it does not sound like good money. It does not sound like a good use of money. Um, nothing against Logic, right? I'm sure that he's gonna be, he's gonna have a little following and whatnot, but he's not also not terribly controversial. He's not, and that is a problem on Twitch. The reason why some of these creators get so big is because they are controversial. Is because they say something that gets them to the top of LSF, or they do they they do something that gets them banned. And Logic is just not that. He just doesn't come off as that kind of person. He's trying to make, I mean, he even says, this is a nice place for me to interact with my fans. So he has a fan base. He has a built-in fan base. He has one point something million uh, 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 subs on YouTube. Uh, and he has like 23 videos on YouTube. It's not like he's doing a ton of work on YouTube. Uh, so he does have some kind of built-in audience that he's bringing to the platform uh for the headlines which will bring more people overall to twitch yeah they don't care about his stream in particular but it will attract crowds that don't frequent twitch yet but the but under a hundred thousand though doesn't really seem like a lot you know like is that enough for long term long, long longevity it makes sense it makes sense it totally makes sense it's like you pay somebody who is at least known and can do a little bit of both like we're not paying somebody to come in uh and and just have a presence and then just like play music every once in a while. Like he is somebody who is a gamer. Like his first YouTube videos, he's fucking playing like Call of Duty or something. Uh, and so like he is, he is, he is a gamer. So he can do a little bit of everything. Uh, and so this is an opportunity for Twitch to say, hey, we're, we're locking people in for exclusivity deals on Twitch who are musicians. And so that could potentially get the more musicians that want to look at get get involved and be like, hey, hold on a second, how can I get some of this Twitch money? Um <clears throat> it's like Drake streaming with Ninja. Exactly. How does does it mean all of some money goes to Twitch or they just guarantee you'll make up the difference over subs? I uh, I don't know what exactly the deal is. All we were told was that there were seven figures involved, and that was it. Um I say, uh, it depends on the advertising deals they strike. If they make uh, ad view every person every 20 minutes, is that still a decent chunk of change? Sure, sure. It's still, though, in terms of, like, Twitch as a whole, for a launch day, it's not a lot. It's not a lot of viewers. Now, maybe he's going to settle and have, like, 20,000 viewers on the regular. I don't know. I don't really know his popularity level or his the enthusiasm level of his fans to go and, like, watch every day. Um, so we'll have to, like, just we'll have to just basically wait and see what, you know, what, what the uh, what his numbers look like over time. But a first day showing of under 100,000 does not seem like a good use of, of seven figures uh, to me. Uh, I don't know how long the contract is for necessarily. I, I didn't see that part. Um, but yeah, so he's re he he did re he did announce that he's retiring from music uh, altogether on uh, July sixteenth, uh, and he's dropping his his final album today. Uh, and he says he says, and I quote, uh, "It's been a great decade. Now it's time to be a great father." And I I have to give him respect for that. He is in a position where he's a recent father, and he wants to focus on that. And it's like, if he can make seven figures on the side streaming on Twitch, then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then fucking do it so there you go so his channel is his channel is up logic you can go and check it out see uh you know what, he, what he's about and everything every community i've seen talk about this no one seemed to know who he is or has heard his stuff before well i don't know i don't know how the venn diagram works for you know certain gaming communities and you know hip-hop uh i mean i can tell you that the times that I played anything remotely hip hop on this channel, I've gotten some comments from people saying, like in chat, saying, "What is this?" <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know how that works. What's his most popular clip? Well, he only has one one day's worth. Uh, this ain't drum and bass. Let me see. Uh, videos, clips, da, 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 clips. Uh, no clips are created in this time period. I have to assume that 
Oh, did nobody make a, a clip last night? Oof. He did. He did stream last night. That's kind of. I mean, when there's no clips made, like if I go through a whole stream and there's like no clips made, for me it's kind of like, damn, what did I not do? <laughs> so yeah, maybe maybe they're disabled. He is on LSF. Yeah, he's he's got a clip on LSF. Um, but why is it not showing up here? Weird. Uh, but you could, I mean, at the very least, you could see, like, it, this is not, like, just some random artist that they decided to still be like, hey, man, come play video games for us. Like, the dude definitely has been playing. Like, he's, he has streamed before. He just now has a deal that says that he has to stream here. Um, musicians are like ice creams. I know that's going to be good. Uh, <laughs> you want some of that uh, once every now and then, but uh, you can't turn in. You can't turn in every day uh, or you'll get... Tired of it. So you can't so you can't have it every day, you get tired of it. Sure, yeah. They decided Vin Diesel to have a Dean D show. Yes. Yes. Could have been disabled for the big reveal. It's very possible that, that it is it is uh disabled for for their uh first first night out. Very, very, very possible. Alright. Ah, donkey, thank you so much, Martha. <laughs> I would totally watch a D D show with uh with Vin Diesel. Absolutely. I watch anything with Vin Diesel, okay? It's anything. Anyways, so that was not like a that was just a real cough. Uh oh, man, it's fucking hot in here. Jesus Christ. Um Have you guys heard about this new this new site that's coming out? This new uh uh this new uh service. It's called uh it's called G40, I think. <laughs> Here we go. Wow. <laughs> In a world. <laughs> uh. Where we couldn't figure out our branding, so we decided to plug our programming with nothing but cops. Cops and Ninja Warrior reruns. <laughs> Fucking Pong. That's why I say G40. All right, so G4 is coming back. We know nothing else. Moving on. No, <laughs> no. so we really don't know much at all. <laughs> we know that G4 uh, posted a tweet. Uh, what is today? The 24th. On the 24th, 9.50 a.m. And uh, that's it. Uh, we do have we do have some recognition from other hosts. Olivia Munn has chimed in, saying, "Hey, now you guys remember Olivia Munn from uh, Attack of the Show and everything G4 TV." Um, uh, it's, <laughs> what is G4? Oh, for reals? So G4 is a uh, uh, was a gaming focused channel, twenty four seven. Nothing but games. But it wasn't pulling in the viewers. If they wanted to pull in viewers, we'll just have this thing play in the background, it's fine. Uh, if they wanted to pull in, in order to get enough viewers for advertisers, they needed 40 million viewers, but they were hitting like 15. And so Comcast was like, hey, let's go ahead and take this tech TV thing that we bought and let's put them together. So they put them together and they had G4 tech TV. And they thought that would be enough to get some more people in. But what they ended up doing was basically making uh, tech TV completely irrelevant on the channel and, filter and eventually they started to uh, started to filter out all the tech TV folks and they were left with again just G4 again so they ditched the G4 tech TV thing and they went with just G4 uh, and so television what is that exactly exactly and so G4 ended up still not meeting with the uh, excuse me well still not meeting with this stock uh, still still not meeting the uh, the requirements to be a successful network it just wasn't enough it just was not enough um, 
was Adam Sessler with them? Yeah, Kevin Pereira, Adam Sessler, uh, uh, Morgan Webb. Uh, I, I didn't watch. I didn't watch G4 that much. I was not a TV watcher uh, at all. Uh, I do have some friends that were watching. I remember going over to my buddy Jared's house, and he was uh, watching at the time. That was honestly the one time, Jared. If you're watching this right now, dude, the one time I went to your house was the most G4 I have ever watched in my life. And that we were we were not there for that long. We we're for one night just hanging out and drinking and all that stuff. So it's so like yeah, I, I just was not a, I'm not someone who watched it that much. But I was full fully aware of the, of the service of, of the channel, uh, and also its decline. I uh, said so my whole family used to watch AOTS while we had dinner. That's awesome. That's really great. My TV stayed on G4 twenty four seven. That's great. I I just couldn't afford to have TV with channels. <laughs> Like legit it man my tv was a projector with an xbox uh, xbox hooked up to it that was it that was it man uh i know i had no tv uh let's see i do a side by side with the g4 announcement and the new doctor spec hype video they look very similar almost like they were shot by the same team <gasps> hold up hold up oh man hold on let's see doctor disrespect 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 let's go see hmm let's do this Boom, kabam, kaba, kabo. All right, here we go. Here we go. Okay, let's start at the beginning. Start at the beginning. Is this a thing? Hold on, is this a real thing? Five and a minute eight, maybe, maybe there's something there. <laughs> I will not, you know what? I have no data to suggest that you are wrong. Let me just say that. Let me just say that. That maybe, maybe it's very possible. It's very possible that this is what it is. <laughs> God, I wish I still had my tinfoil hat. Dang, I can, I can neither confirm nor deny. So, so, uh, let's, uh, <laughs> so wait, so, so seriously though, what, what like, looking at G4 coming back, and we even have, let me just pull this up here, uh, almost every, well, the Morgan Webb, uh, uh, Adam Sessler, uh, Kevin Pereira, and, um, and obviously, uh, 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 Olivia Munn, they've all commented on this, right? That's a, that's a Twitter account. I didn't expect to see again. Uh, I'm just surprised somebody remembered the password to the Twitter. <laughs> uh, and then Kevin just, just it's a random code shit. Uh, so w right now, we don't know anything about what G4 is. But I do wonder like what, what they plan on doing. Um, <clears throat> I can imagine they're probably going to bring back some of the most popular shows, obviously attack of the show. Um, and then outside of that, and yeah, yeah, they can't, they can't do the same. They can't do the same. Like they can't make the same errors. There's no way they can make the same errors. Also, I don't think this is something that's going to go on TV. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be. TV production is so cheap now. That's true. I mean, that's true. Yeah, it's very true. Um, but are they going to be on TV or are they going to be on streaming services? Kevin Barry had the lead of the channel in his podcast a long time ago where he asked for the right to G4 and it was a no. Uh, I think Kevin was also involved in um, some uh, some controversy that we covered a while ago. Uh, right? Is is, is more like faking faking viewers or something like that? Like botting viewers? I want to say that was a thing. I'm not I'm not sure. You guys could back me up on that. Um, <clears throat> maybe that was somebody else I was thinking of. X Play is the other uh, show. Yeah, exactly. So is this going to be a service that um, 
that runs 24 7 is this going to be a service that is just a he bought oh sorry he bought his attack there you go he's training OTS on twitch and had issues there you go uh so i don't know what to expect i don't know what to expect but you know the the uh, the more content we have, the better. They're trying to go for a more mainstream, like, reach. They're trying to get more people involved, which is, like, fine. Totally cool. Um, and if it fails, then it fails. You know? It sucks, but if it fails, then it's a lesson learned. Now, they are not the only ones. They're not the only ones launching a television uh, uh, or a network Similar to, you know, Game Breaker TV. Uh, they're not the only ones doing it. We also have this service called Then that just popped up. Our stories. Our wins. Our losses. Our passion. Our community. And we are building a home to celebrate what we love the most. Say the side of that go wild. A 24-7 network for gaming and culture. This arcade's got a little bit of everything, especially you guys at home in the chat. We'll be diving deep into everything you love to play, watch, and listen to. Streaming is our language. So, oh. you know all those questions that you're afraid to ask? when it comes to life things aren't just black and white so they're they're, they're pitching a bunch of shows here is what they're doing right they're pitching this this is like a mini like a mini kind of pitch for all these individual shows yes sasha gray is on there uh sasha gray has been streaming for a good while now and she's actually really fucking hilarious like her her she's very um uh, she's very open to the fact like she doesn't try to hide the fact that she was in the she was in porn or anything like that and she's totally open to like cracking jokes on that shit uh, but but this is um, but so this is going to be another 24-7 network uh, that has Sushi Dragon which some of you guys may know we played some clips the other day of Sushi Dragon uh, Emily May Sasha Gray and others Cash uh, who's a fitness like streamer um and they're planning on having a 24-7 network that's going to exist on existing platforms. So they're not trying to go TV. August 5th, as it says right there. August 5th is when they're trying to uh, <clears throat> trying to get uh, this thing launched. So uh, they do have, I went and looked these guys up. They do have a solid list of investors. They have Mark Merrill, the co-founder of Riot Games. They have uh, Mike Morheim. I don't think I need to tell you guys who that is. Uh, they have also Amy Morheim. Uh, and then they have Kevin Lynn, the co-founder of Twitch. Who? <laughs> Play it again, dog. Um, <clears throat> so they do have a number of investors, and that's just a few. Like, there's a bunch of actual investor like in companies who are also involved in this too, or uh, firms that are involved in this as well. So they're they're planning on launching on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter on August fifth. So this is very close. This is like ten days away or so, 11, 12 days away. Uh, so. That's something you can look forward to uh, and seeing how that plays out. Now, I did watch a uh, an extended, I think it was an extended clip. We watched it on stream the other day uh, with uh, Sasha Gray and uh, the other guy. <laughs> uh, and the it was it seemed it was going to be like a uh, like a love line type thing which is which was a show that that was on american like you know cable network show that existed in i think early 2000s or so where people would call and they would they would ask questions and uh and it would usually be like oriented towards like romance or sex or something like that. And then the experts, the experts would uh, would answer them. It was a spin off. It was a more it was an edgier spin off of Doctor Ruth's show, uh, <laughs> which was more of a straightforward. This is if you could ask your grandma these kinds of questions, uh, kind of show. So uh, MTV with Doctor Drew and Adam Carolla. Thank you. I couldn't think of Adam's name. And so so. What I what I am curious of is this is a network that's trying to get advertisers. Sasha Gray is not her history does not scream advertiser friendly, um, 
putting her on a show where you uh, you can ask these guys questions about anything related to romance, sex, relationships, whatever, uh, could play really well to us. I would watch a show like that with somebody like her, um, but it may not play well to advertising or advertising or advertisers. So Sasha has rebranded herself very well. Sure, I'm sure she has. I'm sure she has. Uh, but it, we're still looking at something that's supposed to be a network. It's a business that they're trying to get advertisers and all this stuff. And so I don't know if that specific particular segment is going to be. Um, uh, and, and, and let me let me let me make sure I, I, I frame this correctly. Um, it's not about Sasha Gray having a background in porn. It's not about that. It's about the show being neutered because you can't ask these people these questions that you really want to ask because it has to be advertiser friendly. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so uh, we'll have to see August 5th. Um, you see, it says, I don't understand why advertisers shy away from mature audiences. Don't we buy uh, the, the most shit? Yeah. Yeah. And there's plenty of advertisers that do go for that. Absolutely. For sure. Uh, oh, is that a mini app? Oh, it's a little hang up there. Um, oh, no, I don't have a local recording of this. That's fine. Um, probably a small hiccup. <laughs> Kids got disposable income. That's right. That's all I just asked her parents. That's all. I heard recently Mia Khalifa was complaining about having porn held over her for career for uh, or something. Yeah, it's, Mia Khalifa did. Uh, she was talking about how she uh, has had some hurdles uh, in her professional life because she did porn for like six months. Uh, and that's and that's something else too. Like I, I'm sure you guys are, are aware, but you may watch the same porn star over the course of two or three years. But there is a high, this highly likely that they recorded ninety percent of what you've watched within the first three months or so of them actually being on the scene. Like Gabby Carter, for example. Gabby Carter did a bunch of videos within the first handful of months, and then it started to kind of space out and slow things down after that. So a lot of the stuff you've watched from Gabby Carter, which I would recommend, uh, is stuff that was recorded in the first like handful of months of her being in the industry, and that's the way it works with a lot of this. So it's like when you talk about. Mia Khalifa, who is in the industry for I think it was like six months or so, um, she was uh, you know, she was not in the industry for that long, but she did enough work that span that basically took her it, it took over her life. Um, Christy Mack had less than a two year career. What a career that was! Um, actually, Christy Mack was a victim of uh, some serious um, uh, assault and battery from her uh, significant other, actually. So. So yeah, the, the, that part aside, of course, <laughs> as how the channel opens up a new tab. <laughs> yeah, Gabby Carter, man, pretty good stuff. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe you, but I'm going to have to research this and get back to you. There you go. Americans are way too prudish, like murder the hell out of everyone, but tits freak the hell out. Yeah, you could thank religion for that. Um, so moving on, moving on, moving on. This is like a serious like change of gears here. Gab G A B B I E C A R T I E R. So, I uh, <laughs> it's such a strange. I don't know if this is gonna work. This is gonna be the dumbest. Is, there's no transition here. Hey, did you guys know that Microsoft had a presentation earlier this week? We're not gonna go into details, but they did have a uh, they did have a uh, an eight minute demo of Halo Infinite. It's not quite an Xbox thing. It is, and it's also not. Weird segues, speaking of, I know, sorry. <laughs> uh, speaking of seven foot black men. <laughs> John 117 is back. So, yes. Uh, Master Chief is back. Halo Infinite. It is very clear, if you watch this 8-minute demo, which I did, they are going for a more open, open-ish world approach. I don't want to say open world. It's like open-ish world, right? Uh, we don't know anything other than this. Uh, it is a... Uh, you don't think he is, Crypt? I think he is. Absolutely. Um, anyways. It's, it was just my fan fiction. So... <laughs> so... 
Uh, so yeah, it is a very, very open world style approach to Halo. Halo typically is on rails, right? Where you have kind of an open, kind of an open space you, you could get through, right? Uh, but but then you, you typically go the same direction. And if you watch this, it looks like the open part of that of that uh, on rails is much more opener. <laughs> so uh and so visually like in terms of like you know uh, gameplay wise i think it looks great visually in terms of graphic wise to me it doesn't look that much better than like the last halo which came out like i don't know years ago uh it does feel yes yeah, so that was what i said last night actually it does feel very destiny top um like it, obviously we're panning around here because it's like look at all these things you could go and explore but visually, though, like in terms of, of graphics and whatnot, it definitely feels like it's lacking a little bit. Like, look at the texture. Excuse me. Look at the textures on the gun. I have the hiccups now, I guess. No, I don't. Um, uh, look at the textures on the gun. There's like nothing here. It's very flat. It's, there's, just, there's not a lot of textures on a lot of stuff. Uh, so graphically, it's still Halo. Yeah, it, does, it still feels Halo 3. It still feels, well, I don't say Halo 3 specifically, but still, it doesn't, doesn't feel new uh, to me. Regardless, as a fan of anything that Bungie has ever touched, right? <laughs> anything that Bungie's ever touched, I need to read the lore. I need to read it. Um, I am looking forward to this. Uh, we don't have a release date necessarily, but we do know that it's coming out not just on Xbox, but also on PC. Uh, so yeah, you can get this thing. You can actually go through and add it to your uh, to your list right now. There it is on Steam. Release date holiday 2020. Mm hmm. There you go. So you can go check that out if you want to add it to your list. I've already added it to my list because I will 100% play this for sure. Uh, the grapple was a new thing. The grapple looks pretty fucking cool. Uh, that's because the grapple, I don't know if you if it's caught it in any of these uh, clips or anything, but uh, the grapple will allow you to not only get some movement, but also grab stuff and pull it towards you. So it functions a lot like, um, I guess, like a Bionic Commando or like a Just Cause or something like that. So you have a little bit of flexibility with some of the stuff you could do. Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Serene. I feel like I've said that before. Just add the Just Cause grapple to every game. <laughs> every game. And the uh, world will be a better place. Uh, but probably grab it with your Xbox Game Pass description. Yeah, that's right. Did they say anything about that, Corey? I don't think they said anything about the Xbox Game Pass description. But I would not be surprised if this game was free on Xbox Game Pass. Now, I, I don't I don't have any other info on any other games that they talked about. Is it Stalker 2, Fable, uh, uh, some other game, and then Halo. And then a couple of others. Apparently, there's a bunch of games that were announced prior to the actual show event itself um but i didn't get i didn't get any of those this was the one that that i felt like maybe you know, i was most interested in uh they said at one point that everything you saw could come with a game pass there we go yes it'll be a game pass on release there you go so yay so <clears throat> holiday 2020 which is not that far away Okay, ten is like a half a year away. But this half first half a year went by super fast, didn't it? So yeah, it's right around the corner. Uh yeah, the Xbox Game Pass becoming so worth yeah, Game Pass becoming so worth. Seriously is. Jeez, man. Um In other news, completely unrelated to Halo, uh, or anything related to that. If you live in Canada, which I know some of you guys do. If you live in Canada, your CDC has put out some guidelines on how the best way to have casual sexes. And one of the things they suggested was to use barriers like walls, e.g. glory holes, that allow for sexual contact but prevent close face-to-face -face con contact. <laughs> um... That's it. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. This is chat. Chat, thank you so much for being here today. You guys are the best. <laughs> Head on over to Home Depot or Lowe's. Get you some plywood. Just get you just just, just draw. There you go. <laughs> sup, sup, ladies. This is your plaid with your fucking plank. 
<laughs> Fucking Canada, it's so good. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Again, thank you, chat. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, this is a fun episode. I really enjoyed this one. Um, <laughs> we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, hope you guys have a good one. I will see you guys later. Chat, hang out.